With all the focus on glycolysis, amino acids, thermodynamics, and like every other topic you ever covered in undergrad, you would think that the MCAT is just a science test, right? No need to brush up on other topics. Wouldn't that be nice? And while there's tons of resources out there that cover nearly every aspect of the MCAT, including a lot of the resources here on our channel, we noticed one that needs a little TLC, math. But we're gonna fix that. My name is Maggie, I'm a professional MCAT tutor and a 100th percentile scorer myself, and I'm your new math teacher for the day. The truth is, there's a ton of equations that you need to know on the MCAT, but to make any use of those equations, you need to be able to do some basic algebraic manipulations, um, be really comfortable with scientific notation, and even be able to use some basic logarithm math. And since you can't have a calculator on the MCAT, you need to be confident in doing all of that in your head. But let's get into some nitty gritty. Beyond multiplication tables, the first hurdle that you might run into is fractions. You need to be able to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions, but there's really just a few rules. To add or subtract fractions, you have to have the same denominator. Sometimes the denominators start out the same. In that case, just add or subtract the numerator, keeping the denominator the same, and there you have your answer. Sometimes you can multiply one denominator by a certain number to get it to be the same as the other denominator. Just remember, whatever you do to the bottom of a fraction, you have to also do it to the top. In other cases, you may have to multiply both denominators by different numbers in order to make them equal one another in the end. You may remember your math teacher talking about least common denominators, and that's all we're doing here. To multiply fractions, just multiply the top by the top and the bottom by the bottom, straight across. Make sure to reduce the resulting fraction if that's possible. To divide fractions, line them up like you're going to multiply them, but then take one of the fractions and flip it. When you flip a fraction that's called the reciprocal and multiplying one fraction by another fraction's reciprocal is the same thing as dividing the original fractions. Now that we're fraction pros, let's move on to what I think is the most important math skill on the MCAT, and that is conversions and scientific notation. Conversions is all about units. Know the following prefixes, their symbols, and the power of 10 that they correspond to. Femto, pico, nano, micro, milli, kilo, mega, giga, and tera. Those should get you where you need to be. Scientific notation, on the other hand, will serve you in dividends if you invest in it now while you're still studying for the MCAT. Scientific notation is the math shorthand where you can write, say, 50,000 as 5 times 10 to the 4th. I'm telling you now, anything that you can round and shorten to scientific notation, do it immediately. It is much easier to multiply six times three and worry about the exponents later than it is to multiply 0 0.00061 times 3200. The initial shock of even trying to wrap your head around the math of that second equation is just gonna waste time. So if you take anything from this video, have it be to round all your numbers and shorten to scientific notation, starting now on your practice passages. As far as how to create exponents and write in scientific notation, a good rule of thumb is LARS. LARS is a mnemonic that stands for left, add, right, subtract. Meaning, if you have a large number that you're gonna convert to scientific notation, you'll be moving that decimal place to the left. For every decimal place that you move to the left, you're going to be adding that number to the exponent on the 10 in scientific notation. If you have a small number, you'll be moving your decimal place to the right, so you'll take that number and subtract it from the exponent. When you get two numbers in scientific notation and you want to multiply them together, you will just multiply the integers like normal, and then you will add the exponents together. If you're dividing, you will divide the integers and then subtract the exponents. That's all there is to it. The last thing is logarithms, and honestly, for the MCAT's sake, most logarithms can be figured out by just memorizing common logs. The log of zero is undefined, the log of one is zero, the log of 10 is one, the log of 100 is two. Do you notice a pattern? 
If it's a base 10 log, meaning not a natural log, and the number that comes after the log is a factor of 10, then the answer to the logarithm is just however many zeros come after the one. Now, if you have to figure out the log of 200 or something like that, then you can't use that rule. But I think that it's sufficient to just memorize that the log of 200 is going to be somewhere between the log of 100 and the log of 1000. So you know that the answer is gonna be somewhere between two and three. You don't commonly see the MCAT splitting hairs about logarithms, so you should be fine with that rule. Side note, I think it's also helpful to know that the natural log of one is zero. That'll be helpful for your Gibbs free energy equation. So there you have it. That's an overview to the basic math skills that you need to know to do well on the MCAT. But if you want every detail like common unit conversions, more about logarithms and drawn out explanations of the math behind the most common equations on the MCAT, we have a high yield math document that does just that. I'm going to put the link in the description below. So definitely check it out if you need a little extra help on math. But on that note, I'm log ing off. That was terrible. Okay, bye. <laughs>